Hi, this is ET 370 lecture three, part two of this lecture three. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to now cover the full wave rectifier. It's going to be very similar to the previous lecture where I'll introduce the full wave rectifier. Look at this new uh, capacitor equation. Notice it just has the difference of one half. So actually the capacitor uh, has to do less work if you, if you want to think about it that way. Uh, the peak inverse voltage and a circuit sim. Okay, so um, yeah, let's begin. So for a full wave rectifier, um, again, converts AC to DC, um, but this time it actually makes the negative part of the input positive, where in the half wave, it actually made the negative part zero. Okay, and again, we will smooth it with the capacitor. So here's an image of a full wave rectifier. Notice we have this kind of full bridge, four diodes, Wheatstone bridge kind of uh, setup. We have our input voltage, which is AC. And notice we have a ground here, but this is not ground, okay? We have our resistor, load resistor, and we have our smoothing capacitor, okay? So um, these are all the terms defined, input voltage, right? AC, rectified output. We'll assume that for this analysis that these are uh, ideal diodes, and uh, these are the rest of the terms here. Now, how does this work? Before we even look at the individual details, Imagine this is going positive and negative. When this is positive, so you have high pressure up here, let's think about what's happening. High pressure here means that the current can flow either to the right or to the left. And you can see that the diode three will be in a forward bias uh, situation. So the current's actually gonna flow through this right branch. Um, when it gets to here, well, it's blocked by diode two. So it's not gonna go down. It's actually gonna again, go to the right. Okay, so the current's gonna go here, down to the right and charge up the capacitor and go down the resistive load. Okay, so now we have a ground path here. So where does this go? Does it go here? Nope, this is not a ground. It actually goes to this point, okay? And so at this point here, it's not gonna go back up because this was already the high pressure, right? It's actually gonna go down here to the low pressure and complete the circuit. Okay, so when this is positive, it's gonna follow these two black lines. Go this way, down, through the ground, back through here. Now, what about when this is negative? So I have a high pressure on the bottom side here. It's gonna go through this branch. It's gonna get blocked by D4, but now it's gonna go through D2 and again, go through the top of, of the resistor here. Okay, again, it's gonna go through the ground, but this time, because this is a low pressure, it's actually gonna go up through D1. So you can see in the blue, the path of the current uh, when it's negative. And so I have that drawn uh, individually here, where uh, in the first case, VI is positive, and you can see that the diode current is, uh, diode three and diode four is gonna allow current. And so it goes through here and back, so diode three and diode four. Okay, and notice if you do a little KVL, the output voltage without a capacitor will actually be the same as the input voltage, right? You can say minus VI plus v, VO is uh, equal to zero. And so V out equals VI, all right? In the second case where VI is negative, right? Where diode one and diode two are gonna be in forward bias and diode three and diode four will be in reverse bias. The current is gonna go through the bottom here, through diode two, through here. And again, by KVL, V out is going to be similar to VI. It's going to be actually negative VI, but the negatives cancel because the negative negative, and you're still going to get a positive value for V out. Okay. All right. What does this look like on a plot? So if I rotate this, you're going to get something like this. So the black line here is going to be my input voltage that's oscillating. The blue line here is going to be my output voltage without a capacitor. Right? And remember, V out here during this region is going to be equal to negative VI. But since you have a double negative, this actually remains a positive number. And then the red line here is the output voltage with a smoothing capacitor. And it's very similar to the half wave rectifier. Okay? The capacitor equation is going to be nearly identical as the previous full wave. The only difference is, is you're going to have a one half here. Right? Since the negative portion of VI is rectified, the capacitor has to do half the work. So instead of the capacitor having to go all the way and handle delivering current all the way for this one period, it only has to do it for half a period. Right? And so that's why we can put a half here. Okay. Now, the other thing we have to calculate is the peak inverse voltage. Remember, and that's the worst case diode voltage for reverse bias for these guys here. Okay, so let's just look at this example where we're just looking at this situation, right? 
let's say we have a negative voltage here and let's say diode three, we'll just look at diode three for now, okay? Diode three in this case in, is in reverse bias. Well, actually both are in reverse bias, but let's just look at diode three. We could do a simple KVL around here, this blue loop, or we could do a KVL around here. And let's just be clear about the voltages. Remember the output voltage we're gonna say is constant at about V peak, right? The input voltage we'll say is the worst case and that's negative V peak. And so what would the diode three here, assuming it's open reverse bias be, what would that diode voltage be? So let's follow the path. Okay, we can do a KVL loop, minus negative V peak plus V diode three. And we actually come back, that's it. We actually didn't have to worry about the other stuff. And that tells us that the diode three is actually negative V peak. That's our peak inverse voltage in this full bridge case. Remember in the half wave rectifier, it was it ended up being twice. So the diodes actually don't have to do as much work. So there's some advantages so you can, of doing this full, full bridge rectifier. Could we get the same result by doing a KVL around this other loop, by the way? So positive VD3 plus VP, and we're back to uh, the ground. Yep, we've completed the circuit. So VD3 plus VP equals zero we get the same re result. The peak inverse voltage is negative V peak, okay? So now let's go to uh, calculate this capacitor. And this capacitor here for this situation, we're gonna use the one half. So it's really gonna be the same answer as the other one divided by two, right? This calculation here is just to get all the terms, but I'll go over it anyways. V peak, let's assume V peak and R is 100. So it's the same situation as before. Okay, let's say 10 volts is the same acceptable ripple voltage, which means 95 volts is the average output voltage. Ohm's law, which means the load current, the average load current is 0.95 amps. And let's say the frequency is 60 Hertz, which means the period is 16 milliseconds. If I plug it in 0 0.95, 0 0.016 divided by 10, and then an extra one half, I get 0 0.0018. So now let's go over to the circuit sim and see uh, if we get this nice result. So I'm gonna go over here, share screen to the circuit sim. Okay, here we go, let's run this. So what do we notice? I don't have the capacitor in, I'm oscillating at 60 Hertz and I have a V peak of hundred volts here, okay, 16 milliseconds. And let's look carefully. When the voltage is positive, notice the current was flowing through diode three and four. And when the current, uh, the voltage is negative, the current is flowing through diode one and, and, and two here, okay? Um, and this pattern repeats and notice the, um, the voltage across the output here in red on the oscilloscope is always positive. It's bumpy, but positive. Whereas the input voltage is oscillating between positive and negative. Okay. Um, let's look at the peak inverse voltage. What do we have? Negative hundred, which is the, what we calculated, the peak inverse voltage of what we calculated with KBL. Now I can add my smoothing capacitor. Notice I chose the same value of, of uh, 0 0.0008. And these are just the summary of the calculations we just showed, but notice what happens to the output voltage. It's smoother, just like in the uh, halfway rectifier. Okay, so we're getting this nice smooth voltage. Uh, the ripple we've said is an acceptable 10 volts. So the output voltage average will be 95. The average current will be 0.95. And we can see that here. So I have a little ammeter here and you can see the average current is 0.95. And these are all the same calculations. And so you notice whenever you're getting negative voltage here, or sorry, when, these, when this is not getting current, the capacitor is delivering that extra current during those dead interval times, right? And so you can see this kind of charge up behavior going where it's charging both the capacitor and providing current to the resistor from the input. And then when this is not providing uh, current, then the capacitor is doing the work. Okay? And I can click back off. And so you can see what happens uh, when you don't have a smoothing capacitor. Again, this, uh, the link to this guy will be in the description. So you can always click it and then check it out and uh, play with all the values yourself. Okay, I hope you learned a lot and I'll see you in the next lecture.